All right. All right, everyone, let me present to you the scholarship for Song of Solomon. The argument in Wendy Walter's article, One of These Mornings Bright and Fair, Take My Wings and Cleave the Air, The Legend of the Flying Africans and Diasporic Consciousness, challenges the separation and loss of African and African-American folklore. Her argument essentially boils down to this. Novels by Black women offer a vessel of transmission and transformation for the canonical tales of Black communities. And this leads us to the function of Morrison's novel as Walters um, lays it out in her argument. So Song of Solomon transforms the legend of flying Africans to articulate a counter discursive historiography of slavery. It is a pushback to the um, image of slaves being docile or not ambitious in their own rights. Um, Walters also states that Morrison's novel functions as a dynamic site for contextualizing the legend and questions previous versions of the legend as they have existed in cultural memory and in recorded folklore histories. Um, Morrison puts her own interpretation of the legend of the flying Africans into her book, Song of Solomon, questioning um, the previous versions that have existed through oral for folk telling and possibly written folk telling up until this point. And that also Morrison's novel um, will raise questions about previous cultural definitions of heroism and community responsibility. Um, in Morrison's novel, we have the male protagonist, Milkman, who seems to be the hero of the novel, but looking deeper into her work, we find that it's really the women of the novel that are the heroes. They are the unsung heroes, the ones that are there to remind Milkman and other men of their responsibility to the community and why flying from the community has detrimental effect. So nature or the nature folklore evolves. Um, it doesn't stay static. And Walters mentions this in, as she lays out her argument. She says, since such cultures are not monolithically unitary, the legend's context is ever changing. And so is the legend itself. Um, she's referring here to black cultures, to African cultures and to African-American cultures, that they are not just one lump culture. There are many different facets and many different interpretations of the same legend. This leads to a legend that is consistently evolving as time marches forward. And that this type of folklore has an impact in contemporary literature, which we see in books such as Song of Solomon and also um, Black AF. Um, so due to the diversity in African-American communities, the folklore reflects in geographical regions differently. Depending on where the story originates from, it's going to have a different way of being presented in the folklore. And then examining oral and written folklore as separate components is Eurocentric. And European um, literary um, analysis tends to separate oral tradition from the written tradition. And Walters argues that this is a faulty way of looking at um, other cultures and specifically black culture here, that this idea that oral and written folklore should be separate is a Eurocentric ideal and um, diminishes what Black culture has to offer by the combination of these two and by examining these two in conjunction with each other. And then um, Walters also posits that legend as process, not um, static, more dynamic. So this is how uh, Morrison treats the legend in Song of Solomon. Um, she is using it as a process to help Black culture expand, that the legend is dynamic and ever shifting, is not set in stone, so to speak. And that leads us here to, again, legend as process and dynamic. Uh, Walters posits that a view of culture as process rather than product speaks to the strength of Black culture gains through communication, that the mix of oral and written storytelling emphasizes the idea of cultural memory as opposed to cultural forgetfulness. Um, looking at culture as an evolving process versus a set end game um, really does 
open up how black culture is strong through its various communications across geographies and across time. And that by mixing oral and written storytelling, the idea of cultural memory is pushed forward or preserved as opposed to cultural forgetfulness. And that leads us to here, diversity is a strength. African culture, skills, and religion were so thin they disappeared. This was what Walters is saying, Eurocentric um, analyses tend to um, think that African culture is such a fragile thing that as time marched forward and as communication lines opened and as storytelling evolved, the original cultures were lost. And Walters argues that that is not the case. The original culture is not lost. African culture can withstand communication, can withstand modernization. In fact, these things enhance the culture and enhance the storytelling techniques and enhance the legends that are used. And we see this through works of contemporary authors such as Toni Morrison. And all this ties to Song of Solomon in that we see in Song of Solomon the invocation of ancestral ceremony. Um, we see this through this, um, the song when Milkman learns the lyrics to the song at the end of the novel, the um, nonsense words that um, turn out to be the magic words that are going to help him fly away as a descendant of Solomon. And then Walters um, also states that Morrison sees writing as communicative specifically to the Black community and communicative of that community's links to its past. In other words, we need to have these stories. We need to talk about the past. We need to um, put that in context for the um, present generation and then also for the future generations to build upon. And that leads us to the last point there is looking to the past builds a culture for the future. Morrison's novel isn't locked in the past. It's not trying to preserve a culture that is being forgotten, according to Walters. It is evolving the culture that already exists and is recognizing that Black culture is not a monolith, that Black culture is diverse and can stand up and should have this evolution of oral folk telling into its writings. And here is the citation for the article I found. If you wanted to take a screenshot of this or copy it, um, it it's a really fascinating article and applies to um, a few other works as well. And thank you so much for listening.